everyone. This is Derek with Reef Automation. This is episode seven of the GHL versus Apex series. In this episode, we're going to go into a little more advanced programming where I'm going to show you how to set up a skimmer. I'm going to show you how to do it in GHL, and I'm going to show you how to do it in the Apex. So we're going to get started on the GHL first. So we're at our dashboard here, and we're going to make a new channel. So we're going to make a switch channel for the skimmer. So we'll give that a little while to go there. And we've already set up our feed mode, if you recall from the last video, on filter one. So what this basically means is we're going to have the filter, or in this case, the feed mode one, shut off the skimmer if feed mode is on and one. Okay, so you'll notice that there is a delay, so you can delay it a few minutes here if you wanted to. So let's say we delay it for five minutes, so that way it doesn't turn on right away after the feed mode is up. And then now we want to make that skimmer do a few other things. So right now we have the skimmer strictly turning off when the feed mode one is pressed. Now, what if we wanted the skimmer to turn off if there is an alert or an alarm or something else going on? So, for instance, we have an alarm for our temperature, we have an alarm for our pH, we have an alarm for our conductivity, and we have an alarm for our ORP. So, in this case, let's say we wanted it to turn off if there's an alarm state on the pH. In order to do this, you need to use what's called programming logic. So we're going to go over here, and it's called programmable logic. So anytime you want to have a switch channel turn off or on, depending on a specific item and another item, you need to use what's called programming logic. So this is where we'll do it. We have our programming logic symbol one. So one thing you'll notice is there's nowhere to say what programming logic one is. There's no way to label it. Um, I find that to be quite cumbersome, especially when you start to get to a lot of these. There's no way to label programming logic one. There's also no way to pretty much label any of these to anything else, such as your digital inputs. You can't label them. You can't label anything on the variable inputs or the fill water or the dosing pumps or anything going forward, you can't label them. Whereas on the Apex, it allows you to label everything. It allows you to label the digital inputs, all the programming switches, and anything else that is programmable, it allows you to label specifically what it is. So I find that to be uh, very useful on the Apex side. You'll see filter one, which is going to be feed one. And then, you, of course, you can invert it. Like I said, if you wanted to turn off or on, depending on the function, you can also invert it uh, on the channel itself. And then we have the operator. Now, there's a number of operators. So what this basically will tell you is if input 1 is true and or input 2 is true or not or equal or unequal, there's a number of different ones here, then I want you to do something. So for instance, if the filter or the feed mode is on, or in this case, we're going to use an alarm and we're going to use the pH. So if the pH is an alarm state or the feed mode is on, I want you to do something. And in this case, it's going to turn it off. So we're going to go back, back to our switch channels. And we're going to go to where we set up our skimmer right here. And instead of setting it to filter one, we're going to set it to program logic one. So what this is going to do again is if we are in alarm state or if we are in feed mode, I want you to turn off the skimmer and I want you to leave it off for five minutes after. Now we're going to do the same thing in the apex. So we're going to go back to our apex. So in the Apex, they already have uh, the skimmer program for you um, right here. So very similar. Here's your feed timer A, and here's your de delay time of five minutes. It's already done for you, okay? So now 
if we wanted to get a little more advanced, we can take it off of Skimmer, and it's going to take the programming already and put it over here into the advanced statements. Now, if we wanted to do something based off an alarm, we could do it two different ways. We can say if the output or if the outlet email alarm is on, then I want you to turn it off. You can also say if pH is greater than 9, then off, for instance. You could do a number of different things here, um, and that's it. That's the programming for the Apex. There's nothing more to it. So we'll go back here, and we'll go back to GHL. Okay, so now we've got our skimmer set up on both the GHL, and we have the skimmer set up on the Apex. And you decide that you want to add leak detection to it. Whereas if the sensor registers a leak, you want to turn the skimmer off. So now, in order to do this, we have to add another programmable logic function. So the first thing is to check your leak detection. Now, leak detection is under control and level. And it's going to be based on the control circuit number. And we're going to call that control circuit number one. And what's interesting is it uses these as its sensors. So, for instance, this is where you actually assign the sensor to the leak detection circuit, which is called control circuit one. So we're going to keep it easy. So we're going to do one and one just to make it easy. We're going to go back here, and now we want to add it to the programming. So remember, on our switch channel, we've already set up programmable logic one as the ability to refer to on our skimmer. So in order for that to work, we now need to add another programmable logic to the programmable logic that we already programmed. So we're going to go back to programmable logic, but now we're going to go to programmable logic 2, and now it's going to read off of programmable logic 1, or it's now going to read off of what we call fill water. I'm not sure why they call it fill water, but that is what they call it. Fill water function 1 is going to be the leak detection 1. So now programmable logic 2 looks at programmable logic 1, and it looks at fill water 1. Okay, so now you have a programmable logic that's looking at programmable logic 1 and programmable logic 2 in order to register if you want leak detection. All right, so now let's go over to the Apex and do the same thing. You go to Skimmer, and again, you're going to go to Advanced, and we've already have Feed 1, and now we're also going to, again, add if pH is greater than 9.0 then off and now if we had a leak detector it would be called leak and if leak is closed then off now what basically it's looking at is if the leak detector is sensing a leak then turn off the pump that's it that's how you do it on the apex so we got the skimmer set up for a leak detector and we got the skimmer set up so we got the programming logic that looks at programming logic one and something called fill water which is what they register as a leak detector. Now, what if you had a button that you wanted to turn off the system with? Or you had a button or a momentary switch and you wanted to add that? You would need to now go to Programming Logic 3, and it's going to look at Programmable Logic 2 to register if it's something you can use. Or we go to a function now as a digital input. So digital input would be your breakout box or a switch. And now it's looking at programmable logic 2, which is looking at programmable logic 1, in order to get your skimmer to shut off. Now keep in mind, you're not done yet. You've only done the programmable logic 1, 2, and 3. You then need to now assign it to the switch. So you save that. Now here's the thing. We've programmed programmable logic 1, programmable logic 2, and we've programmed programmable logic 3. Now 3 reads off of 2 and 2 reads off of 1. So you want the switch to only read off of the greatest common denominator, which is 3. So we go to the switch channels. And we go back to our skimmer.
And instead of it being programmable logic one, you're going to set that to three. So it's going to read off of three, which is going to read off of two, which is going to read off of one. Now, if we go to the apex, we use the same thing we use for leak detectors. We use for switch boxes, which is the closed function. So if switch is closed, then off and we're done. So as you can see, the GHL takes a number of steps to do basic things, whereas on the Apex, you basically just type it right into the form here on one outlet and you're done. So that's how we do a skimmer for three functions on both the GHL and on the Apex in a more advanced setting. So in our next video, we're going to go over more of the custom features such as the dashboard uh, web camera, the reminders, for instance, the notes, and the log measurements. And we're going to do the same thing on the GHL. The GHL also has a webcam interface right here. And we're going to go over some other things that the GHL has in comparison to the Apex. So uh, appreciate you watching. And you can take a look at all of our videos here. And hopefully you liked the video. And if you did, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up below. And please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Look forward to the next episode. Have a good day.